class. Today we are going to go through this topic of linear motion. Our linear motion makes the assumption that all movement is in a straight line. All roads are straight. There are no bumps, there are no mountains. That is the assumption that is made in linear motion. So we assume vehicles, trains, uh, people, anything, they are moving on a straight line. And uh, they are either moving in the same direction or they are moving in opposite direction. What are the specific objectives that uh, are in this topic? What are you supposed to know? By the end of this topic, you are supposed to uh, define, you should be able to define displacement speed velocity and acceleration we did displacement in uh, calculus displacement is simply distance in a certain direction speed is change in distance with time velocity is speed but in a certain direction and acceleration is change in velocity with the time the second objective, you should be able to determine velocity and acceleration. Then you should be able to plot the and draw graphs of linear motion. There are two types of graphs in linear motion. Distance time graph and also velocity time graph. You should also be able to interpret graphs of linear motion. You should be able to define relative speed. You should also be able to solve problems involving relative speed. When it comes to revising this topic, the main areas that are of concern are actually three. One is about uh, plotting of the graphs. These ones are not really a major issue because information is normally given and uh, you can sketch, you can plot depending on what uh, information you have been given. The other main area is interpreting those particular graphs. I think this is an issue. Uh, there are sometimes you are supposed to interpret and get the gradient depending on what you have been told to get there are sometimes you integrate and you get the area you will be looking at this as we continue in this lesson so it's good to know uh what when you look at a graph what are you supposed to do is it get the gradient or is it get the area you will be looking at that then uh, the other main area which is actually an issue is uh, solving problems in involving uh, relative speed. We'll also be looking at that as we go. Uh, let's start with the distance time graph. Our distance time graph is, as you can see, on the y-axis we have distance, on the x-axis we have time. A distance time graph uh, always increases, it goes up, because um, as time increases, distance uh, also increases sometimes there could be no change of distance but there's a change in time meaning that body or that vehicle is not moving it is at that point the velocity is zero the vehicle is has stopped but time is still moving time cannot stop so that's where you get a flat line a line which is um, parallel to the x-axis but uh, so long as the body is moving and time is also moving of course then the graph will always go up never going back to the x-axis, never going back to time zero. Uh, that's explained here. Now, something to note, the gradient of this graph, the distance time graph, is the one that is of importance because it gives you the speed or the velocity. You know, for you to get speed, it is distance over time. So, so change in distance over change in time gives you the change in y-axis over change in x-axis. That is actually a gradient. So the gradient of a line uh, or the gradient of this line in the distance time graph is the one which gives you the velocity. And you can be asked about velocity between two points depending on the time. Maybe from the beginning to the time to, to, uh, to time is equals to two. So you simply get the gradient within that time. Uh, then we look at speed time graph. So we have a, a, a graph of, uh, of, uh, of speed against time. Speed on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. This graph can start at 0, 0, 
and it may also not start at zero zero depending on uh, the time at which uh, or, or the speed when the time is zero there are two things that are of importance in this graph one is a gradient and the other one is the area the gradient of this line the gradient of the speed time graph gives us the acceleration change in speed that is change in y-axis for change in time that is change in the x-axis so that gives us acceleration so in it you can get the acceleration between any two points then when it comes to the area under this curve it gives you the distance so the speed time graph we have two things that are important the gradient gives us acceleration and the area gives us distance sometimes the area is of a definite shape it could be um uh, uh, uh what it could be a triangle it could be it, it could be anything so what you need to do is to know how to get the area of that shape so if it is a triangle you use the area of a triangle how to get the area of a triangle if it's a rectangle you get that uh like that and if it is a mixture of shapes you divide you divide into into several shapes and then you are able to get the the distance i would like you to do this example a train at, at an initial velocity of 10 meters per second starts from rest and accelerates uniformly for 150 seconds to attain a maximum velocity of 40 meters per second it then travels at a constant speed for 300 seconds and finally comes to rest in 100 seconds sketch a velocity time graph to show the journey of the train then find the distance in meters covered by the train then find the acceleration of the train so i would like you to do that uh, you can get it in the coming slides so here is a sketch of the graph uh, you can go through the question and see there is a constant acceleration from 0 up to 40 then uh, that is for the first 100 seconds then it continues up for, for the next um, uh, uh, time from time 100 to time 450 uh, so that is then the next uh, 350 I think you can go you you, you can scale, you, you can look at the corrections if they are in it it continues um, at a constant acceleration no change in velocity constant speed 40 meters per second then it comes to rest in 100 seconds so you can see that so the shape coming up to here is a trapezium so if you want to get the distance you get the area under that if you want to get the acceleration the acceleration is when there is an in, increase in speed with time if you want to get the deceleration it is this area where there is decrease in speed with the time you can also do this other question a motorist left Eldoret at uh, 11 a.m for nairobi a distance of 320 kilometers away she took uh, one and a half hours to reach nakuru halfway between Eldoret and nairobi where she oh, it took her 20 minutes to fuel the car she then set off for Nairobi, but stopped at 25 minutes after 25 minutes at Kikope, 30 kilometers from Nakuru, for 30 minutes. She then proceeded with the journey to Nairobi and arrived at 5 p.m. Draw a distance time graph to show this journey. Use the graph to find the average speed for the whole journey. Remember, the average speed is normally given by total distance divided by total time then uh, find the average speed for the last part of the journey the last part of the journey is which one i think it is uh, the journey from uh, kikope from the last stop that is at kikope all the way to nairobi so you can you can you can you can draw that i want you to go through that please draw it sketch that graph you don't need a graph book to do this uh, you can do it on a graph paper or a, or, a, or, a, or on a on a plain sheet you can also do it on your class workbook sketch that graph and uh, also do part b and then you send it uh you, you you can send your answers just just do it now in, in class as an in-class assignment 
The other area is questions involving relative speed. When vehicles are moving in opposite direction, then the relative speed is a sum of their speeds. They are getting away from each other or they are coming to meet each other. That means that uh, they will meet each other at the sum of the speed of the two vehicles, of the two bodies. When vehicles are moving in the same direction, you know the relative speed is equal to the difference. So the first thing that you are supposed to get in this kind of questions is the distance between the two vehicles. So the distance between the two vehicles is very, very important. In most cases, a vehicle, one would start before the other. Remember, relative speed does not work if there is only one vehicle which is moving. It only works if one, if both of them are moving. So let's say if a vehicle starts at 7 and it is moving on, on its own, and the other one starts at 7.30, relative speed will start to work at 7.30 when both of them are moving. So you have to know that uh, when this other one was moving alone from 7 to 7.30 for 30 minutes, there's a distance that has covered while the other one was not moving. So that's the kind of calculations you do. What is the distance between these two? What's the gap between the two vehicles? Whether they are moving in the same direction or in opposite direction, this is a must get. It's the first thing you must get, the distance between the two. If they start at the same time and they are moving in opposite direction, where and good, the gap between them is the distance you have been given in that question. So once you get this uh, uh, distance between the two vehicles, then the next thing is to get the time taken for the vehicle to meet or for the one which is faster to overtake the slower vehicle. So the time to meet is normally given by the distance between the two vehicles. That is why it is important to get it divided by the relative speed. This is normally the first step in the, that earns your mark in these kind of questions. And it is also the only step we use the relative speed. We don't use relative speed anywhere else apart from this. From this kind of a question, after you use it here, you will not use relative speed again. You will use the individual speeds of the vehicles. Now, depending on the question that has been asked. I want you to do this question as an example. A bus left Nairobi at 11.45 a.m. and traveled towards Mombasa at an average speed of 8 kilometers per hour. A car left Nairobi at 12.15 p.m. on the same day and traveled along the same road at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour. The distance between Nairobi and Mombasa is 480 kilometers. But A, determine the time of, of the day the car overtook the bus. But B, determine the time the car had to wait at Mombasa before the bus arrived. Time of the day is in terms of AM, PM, like that. So the first thing, as I said, you get the distance between these two vehicles. The bus is leaving Nairobi, 11.45 AM. The car is leaving Nairobi, 12.15 PM. Both of them are heading towards Mombasa on the same road. So these vehicles are moving in the same direction. But one is starting 30 minutes earlier. So the distance between the two vehicles is for 30 minutes, the, for 30 minutes, the bus was moving at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So that bus will have covered what distance? Here it is. The distance covered by the bus is 80 times half, half an hour. That is 40 kilometers. So the distance between these two vehicles is 40 kilometers. Relative speed, because they are moving in the same direction, you get the difference. So it's 100 minus 80, which is 20 kilometers per hour. So at what time will they meet or at what time will the car catch up with the bus? It's 40, the distance between them, divided by 20, the relative speed. So after two hours, that is two hours after 12.15, after the, after the car started moving. So that will give you 2.15 p.m. A simple question, but uh, that is the way to go. Then what about the, what about the, 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 the second part, the time the car had to wait in, in Mombasa before the bus arrived?
We go back to individual speed. The speed of a car is 100 kilometers per hour. Distance 480. So how many hours will the car travel or take to travel between Nairobi and Mombasa? It will take 4.8 hours. What about the bus? Bus is moving at 80 kilometers per hour, covering the same distance, 480. How long will it take to travel? Six hours. We have not been told that any of these vehicles stopped. So we just work with the time that is there. So um, the time of waiting for the, for the car will now be six hours, the time taken by the bus, minus 4.8. And that will be 1.2 hours. You can leave your answer at that point, at 1.2 hours. It is correct. Or you can go ahead and now change the point 2 of an hour uh, to minutes by multiplying 0 0.2 by 60. And you will get uh, 12 minutes. And you write the, uh, the, the answer as 1 hour, 12 minutes. But that is not a must. At 1.2 hours, you get your mark. So as, a, as, a, as an assignment, I would like you in class, huh? so do this now and send it before the end of the lesson. I would like you to uh, do this question. Uh, two passenger trains, A and B, which uh, are 240 meters apart, are traveling in opposite direction. Uh, one is traveling at 164 kilometers per hour, and the other one is traveling at 88 kilometers per hour on a straight uh, railway line. Train A is 150 meters long and train B is 100 meters long. Find the time in seconds that elapses before the two trains completely pass each other. Take your time, do that question. It's a good question. So that's the end of our lesson today. Stay home, stay safe, God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. Thank you.